I don't know. Yeah, so so Hall of Cock. So this is uh, Crespo's uh, Guild Hall. We'll start here. Oh, it's a whole video. <laughs> maybe I'll check it out later. Uh, maybe I won't. I don't know. Uh, let me turn on. Um, yeah, so here's his Guild Hall. And I've been... Uh, what I did with the last stream, so the nine hour one, I went through and I picked out about a dozen of the buildings that I liked and I uploaded them to YouTube afterwards. Um, just so you can see, like, here's just the South Cornet Mall. Here's just um, Klong's house. Here's just, uh, you know, whatever. I'm going to do the same thing uh, for today's stream as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably cut out a bunch of these, pull out a bunch of these clips and upload them to YouTube as well. So right off the bat... You can see, like, all right, so he's got some bounty hunter. Let me zoom actually all the way in. Such, so he's got some bounty hunter armor here. This is just the standard bounty. It's not the old stun stuff. Um, he does have some colorful bounty hunter armor on the inside. So he's got that. You see he's got just a pile of vet rewards here. Some veggie par sign in there. All right, another plant. What does he got over here? A bunch of art crates from DWB. Some alum minerals. Old pod racer's helmet. So the old pod racer's helmet's a quest items. You enjoyed all the tangents. Yeah. <laughs> I, I certainly have a, a penchant for rambling. That's for sure. It's a pickle jar that a guy puts his ass in and then breaks. Oh, you're some shooting cards, shards of glass on his asshole while it's pouring blood. You know, I think, I think I have seen that. Uh, uh, help. Why you don't get me this horny this early? No, I'm kidding. Oh my god. Hey, Wonder Hell, how's it going? We're just uh, wandering through some more buildings on Basilisk. So let's see, he's got some. Oh yeah, he's got some bath salts. These are a fun quest item. It's from uh, I think the. It's not the science outpost. It might be the science outpost, or it might just be the. Uh, so it's one. It's one of the, one of the places on on Dathmir. You can talk to this imperial guy. And one of the things you're supposed to grab and deliver are these bath salts. It says, bath salts ordered from the Blue North Reef of the planet Tiburon, home of the Ishitib species, for Imperial scientist Shib Nisal at the Vepo. Imperial Reef. Wow. <laughs> Mrs. Veplo got jammy bath salts. That got me fed up. <laughs> nice. They, yeah. <laughs> she did. So, uh, so Bloodhound Gang, he, he works uh, with with my wife. They work together. <laughs> and also, I don't know if you guys uh, noticed that, but anytime somebody says Veplo in chat, it plays a random sound of somebody saying Veplo. Uh, it's something I added last night. There's about 15 different sounds, mostly just other streamers. And by mostly, I mean entirely other streamers who either just said my name on... So that one's Hacker Ed. The Veplo with the laugh and the cackle. Uh, some of them I just pulled because they said it by chance. And other people I I don't want to say tricked into saying Veplo. But like a few of them are from streamers who I had never really watched before. I ended up on some like some guy in a bathtub signing people's uh, names on like uh, playhouse balls while he was completely hammered. Uh, so I, I, you know, subbed or threw a bits out or whatever it took at the time. And he signed some balls with my name and then talked about me for a little bit. So uh, I felt a little dirty. I felt a little dirty. It wasn't, I don't know. I, I think that's actually when I had the idea. It doesn't matter. So these bath salts are <laughs> an item you can get from a quest on Dathmir. All right, and then he's got the Thune Skull, Fragment of Alderaan, more quest items. You know, so it starts off, oh, he's got Lightest Family Artifact in here. So the Lightest Family Artifact another quest item. It's easy to get. Um, but the neat thing about it is it gives off that blue glow. So you can kind of see the subtle, the light blue lighting effect. This probably has another one over here too, knowing him. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that's just the beginning. Oh, and then this up here, you can see is an exceptional crystalline clothing treatment. So I'm not the only person who has collected and decorated exceptional crystalline clothing treatments. He's got one. And I think in my crafting, uh, in my crafting workshop, I think I have like five or six in a row. All right, so let's come around the corner here, let this stuff load. All right, so right away he's got a couple of these sexy advertisement paintings from the, the Jabba's theme park quest line. Uh, Life Day Orb, another piece of art, a decorative brazier. Brazier. I don't know how to pronounce that. Like, it's not a brawl. 
Is interior design your bread and butter above all else in game? Uh, if by bread and butter you mean money maker, then no. I've never once been paid to decorate, but I have paid tens of millions for other people to decorate. Um, are you collecting things on Finalizer yet? No. So, so I've said this before. I obviously I have a problem with this game, right? I don't go to sleep. I don't eat. I don't do my job. I don't spend time with my family. So, in an attempt to become less, to have less of a problem with it, for Finalizer. I have given myself some rules, right? So I have only have one character. I'm not making a second character. And my character is only entertainer. No combat, no merchant, no crafting, none of the things that took tons, you know, sucked tons and tons of time from me. So because of that, I'm not collecting things on finalizer. And I don't intend to. I don't intend on dropping a house. I don't intend on um, decorating things. Um, I'm going for like the... <clears throat> I'm imagining myself like a, like a Buddhist entertainer, right? Uh, I'm trying to have no attachments. Oh, look at that. There's my Smuckers Uncrustables ad. Uh, my official sponsor of, um, of the stream. No, not really. Uncrustables are a delicious uh, snack. It is uh, uh, full of uh, delicious peanut butter and jelly in a pouch. It's easy. It, you just take it out, you thaw, and you enjoy Right, it's great for kids on the go. Put it in a bag, put it in their lunchbox, let it thaw throughout the day. Uh, you know, it's what all of the cool kids and ah, adults. Veplo, <laughs> Dalai Lama Veplo. Yeah. So, oh, has it been my uh, go-to Star Wars Galaxies activity? Um, yeah, for a while on Basilisk, it certainly was. I was decorating my own stuff uh, on on my island with with my collections and things. Um, and I do enjoy love. I do love seeing good decorations. So we'll see a bunch of that tonight, um, because the places that I have kind of benchmarked or earmarked to uh, earmarked to go to tonight are all uh, really well decorated. So yeah, you can see, right? So you have this main systems data bank, this quest reward, or not uh, this vet reward. Uh, you can see he has, I don't know, probably twenty or thirty. They're completely lining the walls. This is a guild hall. Normally, right, you have all the kind of the white walls and things. So he is just completely lined all of the walls, and it looks awesome. I did this at a small house on Vetplantis years after he did it here, and it, it just looks way cooler here. It's way more impressive. And right, he kind of has the top row sticking out a little bit further to give you that ledge. Uh, yeah, so just I'm just going to take this in as a whole. All right, so he has all these tables. Things along the walls, paintings up. It's well lit uh, in the sense that it's not super bright. And he has a bunch of those lightest family artifacts around. You can see, like, for example, this chair here has a nice subtle blue glow to it. You know, all these benches are other vet rewards. They've got the rebel blue couches. A couple of Aurelian banners up front here. Subtly blowing. I guess it's not too windy in the village right now. So they're not like clipping through the wall at 45 degrees, like it's a hurricane. Yeah. All right. So now I'm just going to nerd out over, I'm going to turn off um, reshade a little bit. So we'll get some, some aliasing back in. It won't be anti-aliased, but we'll actually be able to read the text. So I'm just going to kind of make my room around, make my way around the room. Gaming table, cantina seat over here, Rancor tooth on a padded, um, or on a throw pillow. I love the throw pillow. So if, if you ever want throw pillows, they drop from Borvo's NPCs. Hey, Clips. Ooh, oh shit, you got some Muon gold. Oh, Nipa loves spice. Oh, I love those emotes. That's a good idea. That is a good idea to get some spice emotes. That was exciting. Mm. I was, uh, that doesn't matter. Yeah, so these throw pillows are nice. They're uh, Borvo's guy, so that's Borvo the Hut. Right, you have Job of the Hut, and then it. Klong has a house on Finalizer. Oh yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I know he's playing there, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'm sure he'll grow that collection. And I'm also I'm curious. Um, I know Wafa, Wafa, you know he bought a, a ton of exceptionals on Basilisk the last couple of years as well. And I know he's been posting in the on Discord on the trade channel that he's looking for exceptionals and making offers on them. So I'm curious if he'll have a, a house that he'll, he'll be decorating with them as well. I have not done. I've seen some good decoration outside Isley. Um, Antics' shop is great. Um, 
the Satch or uh, Arija Adbo are his characters on Finalizer. All his stuff already looks awesome and unique. Yeah, but these story pillars are great. So Borvo's henchmen, Naboo, I, there was no static spawn, so I was ne never able to AFK for them. But I would pay, you know, if, if I ever came across like a new player or somebody would ask me how to make money uh, on Basilisk, I would be like, oh, just go do these mis uh, missions for these guys. And if you get throw pillows, I'll pay you 150K a pop or whatever. Um, so I had a steady stream for a while. So I have, I think, 40 or 50 of these. They're single use schematics. So you loot the schematic and an artisan can make, um, where's an architect? I don't know. So if he has a Rancor Tooth here, I'm assuming this is a blue text. Yeah, so you can see the, let me make this small and zoom in on it here. So you can see it's 231 maximum damage. Uh, I think that they usually, the normal max damage on a Rancor Tooth is like 185 or 183 or something like that. Question, does this game foreshadow that Palpy comes back in the new trilogy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In 1999, 2001, 2000, uh, they definitely knew about that. That was all part of the plan. Uh, although, actually, so the, the, the timeline for this game, um, he's still alive. Palpatine is still alive. It's, I think it's uh, – when, when the hell – does this take place after New Hope, before Return um, Empire? Or is it between Empire and, and uh, Revenge of the – or uh, Return of the Jedi? I should really know that considering how much useless crap I know about this game. Yeah, so Pal Palpatine is still alive. He's at the – so I guess it's definitely before Return of the Jedi then. Um, he's at the Emperor's Retreat. So if you do the Imperial theme park, he's there. New Hope and Empire. Yeah, so the, the timeline of this movie is it's supposed to take place between New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Um, so one, like I know during live, one of the little event quests they had was cries of Alderaan. So I guess it was supposed to be, you know, about Alderaan being destroyed it was a recent event. Of course, uh, you know, true to the timeline, there are hundreds of Jedi running around with lightsabers everywhere in every city attacking each other. Cause that's, that's how I remember the movies. Uh, yeah. So let's see here. We'll keep going around vid screen. Uh, is this, this is either from. What is oh yeah so the, actually speaking of Alderaan this vid screen is from one of the the cries of Alderaan quest line one of those items I think to make the decoder anti decay kit because why not you know just flex on people have an anti decay kit which by the time he, when he quit they were probably twenty five million a pop ish I don't know when he would have gotten it so yeah so he's got some. Uh, exceptional, an exception, exceptional Athorian Sentinel helmet here, and I have to be careful while I'm looking at these things because I'm on admin on his building, so I could easily accidentally pick up the stuff, and that would that, I don't want to do that. I don't want to mess up the decoration. Uh, I've I've thought about stealing some of his stuff. Uh, I've I've paid on this. Uh, I'm sure his bank account has a ton of credits, but I have paid credits in this guild hall to make sure it lasts. But uh, yeah, so I don't I don't have an Athorian Sentinel helmet, exceptional Sentinel helmet. Oh, I should also mention his character was Athorian. According to his blog, Raph Koster asked multiple times for changing the timeline. He was not happy about it. Yeah, yeah. I, Raph Koster's blog posts were a lot of fun to read. If anybody hasn't yet, you can just I think just Google Raph Koster SWG, and he did um, a series of posts about Star Wars Galaxy. He was the lead uh, game designer. Uh, when, when they were making Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah, so the coolest Athorian Sentinel helmet I don't have. Uh, Sentinel chest. I don't know why he has this here. It's looted. It's 80. Maybe it's yellow text or something. Or maybe he just put it to go with the helmet. Yeah, nothing, um, nothing's jumping out at me about this being... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe just a random looted one. See, so he's got some stuff on the shelves down here. Let's see, stone knife. Oh, look at that! Overcap health poison, uh, four hundred and twenty-seven strength. You know, I can I can zoom in on that again. Let's make this a little bit smaller. So yeah, you can see that four hundred and twenty-seven strength health poison. Uh, the dirt, the potency is is garbage, of course, <laughs> uh, but still pretty neat. Let's see the stone knife next to it. Quickness disease. That might be a 200 low IQ. <laughs>
I guess that is that a, was that a monkey with a lightsaber? So let's see, he's got a D17 pistol here. Another strength disease. All right, what do we have up here? Exceptional Night Sister Shard. So that's pretty good. Negative 32, negative 53, negative 49. And I see it's a three stack, so it could still be, I guess a three stack could turn into boots, but you don't really need shards that good to make no encumbrance boots. Duration 745. Yeah, so so actually the the max duration for a disease is like um, 1,200 seconds, I think. So what's that, 20 minutes? So you can actually loot a dot. So I've looted dots above 1,200. Um, you know, if they – it used to be – you used to be able to – years ago in Basilisk, you could loot dots that were over cap if they were looted from a high level – the combat log level. The combat level of a, of a mob would affect the strength of the dot. So if it was like a 300 level combat mob, um, the dot could be above cap. But they, they changed that at some point. Monkey with a lightsaber, now we're at my tempo. Yeah, yeah, me too. So in a, an Athorian Defender bicep, also exceptional. So the, the items that are saying exceptional, so any any item in game that you loot has a small chance of rolling as exceptional or legendary. Um, an exceptional item is a 1 in 100,000 chance, a base chance of 1 in 100,000. Combat level of, you know reduces that. If it goes higher if you have a higher level mob. Uh, it gets less likely or more likely rather. Um, and legendary is 1 in a million. So... So these these ones here, these exceptional items are uh, at, at least uh, like a, a hundred one in a hundred thousand chance of dropping, and he's got you know a whole bunch in here. Not as not as many as me though, but he's got a whole bunch. So spray stick. I'm assuming this has a dot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Actually, speaking of over strength or or over cap uh, duration dot, there's a one thousand two hundred ninety seven second and one hundred fourteen percent potency. So my guess is he probably looted these from a, a higher level mob. And like I said, they changed that publish eight or nine, I think. So uh, things can no longer go over cap just from the combat level. You still can loot uh, a yellow text. So if, if I, a yellow text is similar to exceptional or legendary, but it's more common. It's one in a thousand. Um, and, and so exceptional is a two and a half times modifier on every stat. Legendary is five times. Uh, yellow text is just one of the stats, not all of them, and it's a, a 50%, a 1.5x um, increase. So here's a health fire. Pretty good, 199, 100% duration. So Crespo, I think he used the PvP. So he has um, more dots on display than, than I have because, you know, just more, more what he was into. So some exceptional rancor hide down there and another nice throw pillow. Go over here. What do we got? So this is – I really enjoy this little table here. There's a lot of stuff here that I, I like. So let's see, he's got a couple armor attachments down here. So this one is just food assembly nine, ranged injury treatment speed eight. Um, that was another thing that changed at one point in time. You used to be able to, the armor attachments and the combat attachment, clothing attachments drop to the same mobs. So this, you can see, has food assembly on it. Um, since published seven or eight, none of the armor attachments will drop with, is this an Ikea shelf? Space Ikea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is the uh, the Barkunter top. This is this this is the name of this item here. It's the Barkunter top. This is a vet reward, and there's a few variations. You see, like there's a uh, kind of a curved end one here, and then I don't know if he has any. Oh, there's back here maybe. Yeah, there's one that's a big L shape. This is the Elvugen Barkunter top. Yeah, so he's got some armor attachments down here. Combat medicine assembly. I'm assuming he has these because. They have crafting uh, mods on them, but it's an armor attachment. So he probably put those there after they stopped dropping. And then I can see he's got some jetpack parts over here. He's got the jetpack base, the stabilizer. Uh, he's got the broken cyborg arm from the village, from Mal Malachi or whatever, I think, right? That's his arm. Which server were you on during live? I've forgotten. I remember you said you took a break. So I played on Wander Home, and uh, I didn't take a break. I played... Well, in the very beginning, I took a little bit off, right? When I, I started playing at launch, and at launch, there were a lot of bugs. You know, there was there were no vehicles, no mounts. They're not bugs. Uh, there were corpse runs. So at first, if you if something killed you, all of your shit stayed on your corpse. And then the thing that killed you was right there. So it's like, hey, that womp rat killed me. 
and my weapons and my food or whatever uh, – actually, I didn't, I'm sure I didn't have food at that point. Maybe a weapon, maybe some armor uh, is now in my corpse that the Womp Rat is standing on. So the thing that killed me when I had my stuff is stopping me from getting my stuff from my corpse. There's a bug with Dark Jedi Medallion that drops from Malachi. You can equip it, but it's basically invisible. Oh, yeah. That doesn't surprise me. So the appearance – OK. I think there's some other – like rebreathers are the same way. You equip a rebreather, you can't see it. Um, yeah, but but then I, so at launch I, I played and then I took a little break uh, because there were so many bugs for maybe like two weeks or a month, maybe a month and a half, not long. Kept playing Dark Age of Camelot at the time, and then uh, and then I went back and then I played for about a year and a half. Uh, I quit I think right before the combat upgrade or right before JTL. I never played either of those during live, um, but then I never went back. I, um, you know, I, I played, yeah. So I guess I played for about a year and a half, two years, basically from launch, and then and then stopped playing until I made an account on the emulator in 2014. So he's got some bounty hunter boots here that are from Publish Seven. So they have the random color, kind of the cream color instead of the regular blue. He has another pair over here which I really like, and I have thought about. Remember I joked earlier about stealing some stuff. This was would have been one of the first things I would have stolen from him if I was going to take some of his items, and that's because I have some uh, green bounty hunter armor. I have a green helmet, a chest, and a bicep that are gray with green trim or green with gray trim. So these would kind of fit. And I thought about replacing, you know, kind of trading. So putting a pair of my boots here and taking his boots, but uh, you know, I didn't obviously. Crap! I forgot about that. I remember using a small. Cab of spray paint to hold down the up hour because I didn't know about numlock. I got <laughs> stormtrooper armor from Imp Hill bedtime before vehicles took ages. Yeah, yeah, it was um, <laughs> yeah, traveling took forever. Corpse runs were a pain, but I think there were there were other. Why did they remove the color bounty? So the color bounty on armor was a bug technically, right? So all the fun things they remove are technically bugs. <laughs> you know, just. To be a little playful about it, um, so I don't know what changed in Publish Seven, but whatever they changed, it started dropping bounty hunter armor with random colors, um, which was not intentional. And um, thankfully, f for collectors like me, or for people like, or just for, I don't know, thank thankfully for the whole fucking server. Uh, back then, for Basilisk, they wouldn't do small up like finalizer. Right, we're getting these weekly updates. So if this week they found out bounty hunter armor is dropping with random colors, they would fix it, and next week it would be gone. But that's not the way Basilisk worked. Basilisk, unless, unless it was really game breaking or it's a uh, stability issue, they would do a publish. They would publish the code to Basilisk, and we would play with that for a year, a year and a half, two years until they did another publish. So, however long Publish Seven was up, it dropped that whole time, and then um, Publish Eight came and it went back to dropping just the, the blue and the gray. So it's technically a bug, uh, which you know I I loved. I was up for 76 days once while I was playing. Yeah, hey, welcome, Johnny, by the way. Uh, yeah, Baz, especially the last few years. Like when I started in 2014, it felt much like Finalizer. Um, you know, when we got a new publish, well, actually, anytime we got a new publish, there were a few days or weeks of instability um, the way Finalizer is. And then it would slowly get better. And then it would be you know, a couple, whatever, like, you know, it would reboot every few weeks or maybe once a month. And then towards the end, especially the last couple publishes, like to publish 10 and all the publish 10 mini publishes, um, they weren't adding anything huge, right? They were just f tweaking existing things, adding – it wasn't like, you know, publish six. It's like, hey, droid engineers can build droids that work now, right? It wasn't a big – yeah, Questline NPCs being on a roof. I did post about that, by the way, Johnny, in the, the Quality Assurance uh, channel in EMU Discord last night. And Ferelli said they're aware of it and uh, they have a fix uh, for the and there's I guess other NPCs that are also walking, so right when they walk, if they end up under something like they've been on build, roofs of buildings of starports and things like that, um, so if they they kind of meander now with the new AI in a way that they never did, and if they walk under something, when it goes to set that Z coordinate, it just looks at the top layer, so it just pops them up top, and then they get kind of stuck. Did you see the shit show on tonight's stream? No, no, I didn't watch any streams tonight. So um, I took, um, we had a hike for Cub Scouts today. So I took my son, uh, my daughter was at a baby shower with my wife. 
and we uh we weren't hiking for three hours today then we got back i kind of fell asleep on the couch for a few hours after dinner so i don't know what happened on tonight's stream wonder how says i saw some rebel troops walk on the roof of a base yesterday yeah it's the same thing the newer ai just the, they walk around uh, where they didn't used to walk around and because of that you know they've been getting stuck up on top of stuff uh yeah all right i'm gonna keep looking at some stuff from crespo's uh guild hall here <laughs> i'm bad i'm really bad at doing two things at once so if i'm talking uh, about or answering a question or reading i'm just i'm not doing this i gotta get better at doing two things at once there Oh, you know, I just realized I'm not playing any fucking music. I was supposed to have uh, been playing some music this whole time. And I got my little, uh, so I, yeah, so Ewok Crossbow uh, with a mod. So you see it has cover. So Ewok Crossbows are fun. Uh, they're also never drop again. They removed them on Basilisk in the last mini publish. So that means they never made it on the finalizer. But this one dropped with a mod. So it's a, you know, one in a thousand chance. And, and then Crossbows themselves are kind of a rare drop from Ewoks. But uh, yeah, so I made this little uh, – so that I'm using a FUBAR media player to play uh, the music right now. I don't have a Spotify account, and when I looked at a lot of the OBS tutorials on like how to include the music you're playing, it was all like Spotify. So I'm playing this, and then I'm just capturing the album art from the player itself. And then I have FUBAR. Um, I've put in a plugin to output the name of the musician – of the band and the, the song – uh, to a text file and then OBS reads that text file. So this is a real like janky. And then I just of course made my little animation here. Um, what's not janky though is when you're rushing out the door uh, with your kids to go on a, a long two hour drive to go sightseeing or to, to go over, you know, grandma's house and you don't have any snacks for the car. Uh, what's not janky is grabbing some Uncrustables. Open up that freezer, grab a few of those Uncrustables, toss them in a bag and uh, let them fall while you drive. And then when your kids get hungry or you get hungry, these are not just for kids. These are for adults. You just pop one of those Uncrustables in. Oh, same thing with Spotify. You have to capture the windows anyway. Oh, I thought I found there was some – yeah, I guess you're right because there was like a piece of software somebody used. But yeah, so this is my little – you know, it just hangouts down there. It's transparent. And then that pink waveform across the bottom, uh, that's based on the music. So if I pause the music – That'll stop. I don't know why. I just saw that and I was like, ooh, that seems fun. It doesn't necessarily fit with the stream, but, you know, whatever. I do what I want, god damn it. Yeah, so another thing. Actually, this is the thing I would probably take before I would take the Bounty Hunter boots. If I was going to steal anything from Crespo, it would be this exceptional Vibro Lance. And I say that not because, you know, it's – I mean, it is good. It's a good Vibro Lance. Here, I'll, I'll zoom in on it down here. Uh, you know, it does have good stats. But it's the only exceptional pole arm I do not have. So all the other, you know, wood staff, metal staff, reinforced combat staff, long vibro axe, um, nice sister lance, regular lance. I have every exceptional pole arm except the vibro lance. So he has this exceptional vibro lance here, and I've thought about taking it uh, many times. But pretty much every time I'm here, I take it. Well, I think about taking it rather. Oh, I just hit a button by accident. All right, we seem good. Actually, hold on. I may have just hit a button on my little fake, my little uh, Learin board. Active buttons, did I? No, okay. Whew. All right. Yeah, so the Viber Lance I don't think has a dot. Are you thinking of like the Night Sister Lance that has a dot? All right, let's keep checking out. So he's got a Viber Knuckler that he crafted here. Uh, probably really good motors, so it's pupped to 179 to 343. So it's definitely, I feel like 343, that might be over cap. If you had perfect 120 motors and a perfect damage slice, I think it ends up a little bit above 300. So this might have been an over cap motor. The Vibro Knuckler next to that is uh, has a dot, so it's a VK with a 318 strength mine poison. And does he have a third Viber Knuckler in here? Oh, he's got four actually. Oh gosh. Okay, so this one is another Mind Poison. And then the fourth Viber Knuckler is a Mind Disease. So 
I guess he liked his uh, his vibro knucklers, and they're they're fun. Just got four of those. Exceptional Elite Carbine. Some Dorba Laths from uh, the Village Quest. An LLC. This has a strength disease on it. I love Veplo. Ooh, Veplo. Player character models are stored server files, right? Um, so I I don't actually know, 100% sure. So I, the server, it probably doesn't store, you know, the visuals, like those type of files. It probably has a bunch of values um, that the client recognizes, right? So the client, the files will have, here's a human, you know, here's a transition, here's a Wookiee, and then all the, probably, I, I'm, I'm not sure how it, Right, all the different things, all the different settings you can change as an with an ID for your appearance, you know, your hairstyles and all that. I'm sure that's in the client files. And I'm sure probably what the server is storing is just some text or some data about, you know, oh, for this slider, the face sliders, uh, the nose is 72 wide, 11 protruding, it's this hairstyle, eyes are this shade of, you know, this color. Um, so it probably stores that type of stuff. Uh, and that's what gets. You know, that information is sent to – so, for example, if you were to come walking in this guild hall right now, uh, all that information would be sent to my client and then my client would know how to display, you know, how to, how to, to make you look the way you look on your screen uh, would be my guess. Uh, instead of, right, not spending – sending the 3D models or anything like that, just sending the values that my client can then use to make the, the models look the way you want it to look. Some exceptional padded boots. Right, and that also makes sense um, from a, <clears throat> a constraints time. You know, this was made to play over dial-up, so you can see right now my bandwidth is 0.6 bytes a second. You know, it's nothing. Of course, I'm in a building by myself; nothing else is going on. So I would expect and hope that to be low. So he has some exceptional padded boots. He has a heavy acid rifle. No dot. Maybe it's yellow text. 1500 max damage. I'm not sure. Tuscan rifle. So this is an older Tuscan rifle. Uh, they used to be kinetic damage, which makes more sense. You know, for a Tuscan rifle, it's not – they're an energy weapon now, and I'm guessing that was a 14.1 change. But for a while, they were kinetic. So if you crafted them or if you looted them, like in the case of this one, they would have kinetic damage type, which is great for a rifleman because there's no other rifle. Actually, is the Berserker rifle kinetic damage or is that energy? And that was added much later. That was from the Corvette. I don't remember the damage type. But I know when I did my rifleman and I was bounty hunter – Back in like 2015, there were no other kinetic. So I had to get – even at that point, it was changed to energy by 2014 or 15 when I started playing. So I had to get an older Tuscan rifle with kinetic energy damage. But it, just, it was great for some of those Night Sister bounties that had a high kinetic – or I'm sorry, a high energy resistance or the other stuff. So I would use kinetic because they had a low kinetic resistance. So exceptional tr tree dwellers hood, those bounty hunter boots that are green that I liked. Yes, yeah, so it's just real nice. And then over here, I love – he had a fascination for data disks. Uh, there's none on this one. Uh, I guess they're coming up. He has them all around. So there's a lot of different data disk quest items. All right, but let's look at this bookshelf. So he has – so you'll see this wearable's name, armor underscore night sister underscore bicep underscore R. That was the, the publisher where they changed the night sister bicep from dropping in the loot tables for night sisters to being a vet reward. That first publish where it was a vet reward – the string was not right. So, right, this is the value they would put on. And what it's supposed to do, speaking of client files again, right, some of the client files you have are just a ton of strings. So, a lot of the NPCs and their dialogue, what the server has stored and sends to your client is just like, um, like a variable name, basically. And then your client finds that variable name in the string files and then displays that. Which, if the text is longer, right, if it's a bunch of dialogue from an NPC or something like that, it makes sense because now the server's sending and storing less, less data. Um, for item names, it's probably, I imagine, small savings of space, but it's probably pretty similar. But anyway, in this case, kind of that variable name for the string they used was incorrect, so it didn't match what was in the client file, so now it displays like this. So that was just one publish, the first publish of the, the vet reward with the Night Sister Bicep. This is the... One of the only – it was the only – it was the first uh, that I know of. Um, ah, <laughs> ah, Veplo. How the heck did you learn all these details? Uh, just by playing like a maniac for seven or eight years. So I, I have huge knowledge gaps of things that happened before I started playing, right? Like I know 
oh, I know the the precision tuned weapon scopes from Jabba's dropped with damage, so it allows weaponsmith to put damage in a slot that didn't used to or isn't supposed to have damage. But I don't know what published that changed. Um, I never did the quests, you know. Well, I guess I did later. Um, but yeah, so there there are a lot of things that happened before I started playing um, that I know of a little bit just because whatever. But but a lot of these details I know are just because I played. And I remember I would always be excited. You know, on Finalizer, we're getting those quick rapid updates. On Basilisk, they would have big uh, Google spreadsheets of the next publish. You know, oh, here's the publish seven checklist. And I would always be excited to look and see what's on there. I would look before, uh, not right away. I, I learned this. I learned this trick later, to keep an eye on that that publish list before the publish happened, because then I would know. Oh, Ewok crossbows are no longer dropping. Oh, there's exceptional Ewok crossbow for auction that will literally never happen again. So let me bid way too much. Uh, Two hundred thirty-five million credits in that case to win this, because I know that they're being removed. Or, for example, um. The publish where they changed the the crate sizes for factory crates used to buy used to be a hundred by default, and I knew that they were changing it to twenty five for chef. So, for example, some things that you make as chef Bivoli is my, my go to example. Bivoli has three components. So, oh, my heater's kicking on. Maybe, yeah. All right, come on, uh, Mike. How does anyone get two hundred thirty one crates? Um. The peak credits I had at one time, I had about 900, 950 million credits. Um, they weren't all mine at that. Actually, I was holding a lot of credits for people uh, from my tape sales on my vendor because I sold tapes for other people. But I've spent in my in my spreadsheet where I keep track of all of my exceptional items, I've spent I think like 1.3 billion or 1.4 billion on exceptional and legendary items, but that's not including like the hundreds of millions I spent on Mando armor, bounty hunter armor, vet rewards, right? I'm sure I've cycled through billions of credits over the eight years of playing. Um, but, but there are a lot of ways that somebody could get. So the biggest one I'll say is time. You do anything, even if it's not super well paying, like anything that's accumulating credits. It, but imagine if you did that, you know, every few days <clears throat> or every week for three years, you're going to end up with tons of credits. Uh, especially after you get kind of geared up and you get what you're into, right? Like whether that's um, PV stuff or collecting stuff or PVP or whatever, right? You kind of get to a point where you're like, I'm geared up. I've got everything I need. Uh, I'm going to keep looting stuff because I want to try to get that really rare, exceptional or legendary item that to really, you know, my gear's at 99% now to get to that last 100% percentile of quality. Uh, but along the you know the journey of trying to get that really rare drop, you'll just accumulate all these tapes and, and other drops that you don't need, dots you're not going to use, and you can sell them, and then it just the money just piles up. Even AFKing, so I AFKed a bunch of stuff for years. I started with Aquans, I did Ewoks, I did Rebel NPCs, I did Night Sisters. Uh, so even Night Sisters, right? I'm trying to get exceptional items or good dots to sell to buy exceptional items, but they would drop shards and layers and tapes. You know, so all that adds up, but even just the credits, right? I got tens of millions of credits literally just from looting seven or a thousand credits at a time, right? I mean, if it's if they drop a thousand credits and you're killing, I don't know, 50 of them a day or 100 of them a day, that's a million credits every 10 days. But now you've been doing it for two years, that's tens of millions of credits just literally looting a thousand credits at a time. So, yeah, the biggest thing is time, I think. But anyway, uh, yeah, so these goggles here. Uh, these stress test goggles. This was the first time that they had the EMU that I know of made an item that didn't exist kind of before. Touche. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I have a forum post. Uh, actually, hold on. Uh, let me try to find it real quick. I think I have, I did it a while ago. Um, yeah, here we go. Let me just double check. All right, so here's, oh yeah, let me just click on my post. I'll put it in chat. So this was, I wrote this three or four years ago, or four years ago. Do, 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 chat. So that was just kind of me rambling. I've done it, I had done it multiple times in the forums, um, but all the different ways that I made credits. Um, some better, some worse, right? I think the biggest thing is just finding something that you like or something that interests you and doing that. And then once you get bored, do something else. That's the great thing about playing a sandbox game, right? You're tired of doing this shit. Go do something else. There's a lot of, a lot of ways to make credits. Um, yeah. So this, so this item, so for publish 10, 
they had uh, at that point they had TC Prime. So TC Prime was a clone of Basilisk. Now it's a clone of Finalizer, and they wanted to stress test Publish Ten. So they asked. They had an event where they tried to get as many people on TC Prime before they published that uh, Publish Ten to Basilisk, and everybody that went got a pair of these goggles uh, in their inventory and like a thank you email for helping test afterwards. It was the first time I know of, of them giving out an item, and I love it. I wish they would do more of this stuff. This obviously is right up my alley. Um, they, I don't think they've done it since, other than well, I guess last year, twenty twenty one, they did a you know a few quests like they did the Basilisk uh, ninth anniversary, and there was um, a cake that you could get. So yeah, so they started doing it a little bit more. There was the Jedi table, which I fucking loved in December. So there was a a holiday quest, and the thing you get at the end was just a table. But it was from – I think it's a light Jedi style table. But it's not a table normally obtainable at all. But now you I, you can decorate with it. And I <laughs> – so there's a one-hour cooldown on characters, character creation. So the whole two weeks that that quest was out, <clears throat> each night when I was at my computer, I'd make a new character. I would do the quest. I'd get the table. I would delete the character. I'd wait an hour and I would do it again. And then I would do it again. Anyway – Doing that, I ended up with, I think, 60 or 70 tables, which means I had my <clears throat> original nine characters, and then I probably made 50 or 60 new characters just to run the quest to get the table to delete the character and repeat. Uh, and the funny part is, you know, three weeks later, they announced that they're, or a month later, maybe, actually, that's not true, two months later, because it's February now. Two months later, they're like, yeah, we're taking Basilisk offline. So I spent all those hours getting a table to decorate, and I did decorate it with it in two spots. Um, but anyway, holy geez, I've been streaming for almost an hour and we're not even halfway through the first building on the list of buildings. So after this, it'll go quicker because some of the other buildings I want to look at are more about decoration and not item collection. So I won't feel compelled to look at every item the way I'm doing it now. Um, like I want to go to Tisco city, uh, Yin Li Ha on Rory. And that's just a, a pure visual because her decoration is amazing. Yeah, so that's that. So package flash powder, that's a quest item. Actually, no, that's a loot item. You, I think you can – would be useful fixing a broken firework. That's interesting. Yeah, so that's just a – I think like a junk item. Some toxic rations. There are three or four quest items that have the same model, this cool-looking uh, container-looking thing, this rusty box. Uh, precious keepsakes is another one. That's from the Borbo quest line. It's kind of rusty-looking old metal box. Just a neat-looking thing. All right, so back here, he's got some of these bottles, schematic, or bottles you can make from looted schematics. Um, uh, an R2 and a 3PO minifigure. He's got these cantina seats, which are uh, uh, vet rewards. A bunch of those. So this is fun. Uh, as a chef and a collector of quest items in um, Moss Take, there's a rebel guy that you get four quest items along the way. Uh, that are food. But what I like about them is they have these fun little descriptions. And he actually, I remember he, he did not know about these and he saw them in my house one time and he asked about it. So I think I actually went and ran the quest on a rebel tune and I think gave him a set for Christmas or just as a present one time. Yeah. So Bantha steak soup, cube one thick Bantha steak, trim fat, pat dry, saute meat in Bantha butter until brown core seed and chop two large, Ottowergs. I don't know what the hell Ottowergs are. That's fun. Chop two large Ottowergs, three ripe dropies, one small co coba if available. Add vegetables to cook meat. Cook till heated through. Put in a pot of boiling water. Cover. Simmer in low heat for three days. Add rusha to taste. Mm, rusha. Serves one to two. A little bantha steak soup. And he, he has the other uh, four quest items as well, so we'll get to those. All right, so I'm continuing my way around the border here. I will come and do the interior behind us uh, afterwards. So here's uh, another one, Tuscan bread. So Tuscan bread. Mix one cup blue milk, one cup water, one pinch Tuscan brew yeast. Leave in warm place for a while. Hello there. CD Thorn, just follow the channel. I hope they like dick jokes. Welcome, CD Thorn. Thanks for the follow. Uh, yeah, so the, the follow messages there are, I think I've got about a 15 or so, and they're random. So you got the dick joke one. So I hope you like dick jokes. Uh, my, I was trying to think of a good actual dick joke. 
And all I came up with was, was my biggest dick joke is how small my dick is. And then I was like, oh, let me turn on my webcam. But I don't want to get I don't get banned from Twitch for showing my tiny dick. Have like yeah, so this does it does have the same model. And actually the Bantha steak soup has the same model as Blood Chowder. So that's a real common thing you'll see with quest items. Is they'll just use an existing model appearance from something. You see, Thorn has a question. Oh, uh, you know, and when I'm zoomed in like this, the chat disappears. All right, from uh, might be able to answer. All right, shoot, what question do you have? So this is the uh, Yopi cream pie. It's one of the. It's just fun because it's an item that says cream pie. But yeah, so so a lot of the quest items are just taking existing items and giving them a different name and description. There are a few items that are exclusive to quests, like uh, there's no other way to get them. And I think he has some here. I 3D printed a few Star Wars items already. I just don't know if it's possible to get those files in an STL form. All right, so I remember there was a guy on the forums who posted... So I've never done any 3D printing, so I, I don't have any personal experience to draw on from here. But there was a guy in the forums who printed – actually, hold on. I know because I sent it to a carry-on once. Uh, let me see if I can find – I'm hopping over my Discord here. What the hell is I carry him? He's Mongrel on Discord. Mongrel. Mongrel? Ah, oh, fuck. I know I sent it to him at one point. Well, all right, so I can't find it right now. Uh, I don't know what the hell his Discord name is, but he he three he three D prints stuff from Star Wars, and somebody on the forums posted like a little workflow or a tool that they used for pulling stuff out, miniature comp helmet, but it was the file and thing versus. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember on stream you were showing it, and then you had the bigger one, right? The bigger comp helmet that somebody made, or that or you you were talking about it. Uh, look at that. Wonder how coming in with the answers. You can use a blender add-on for converting the tray to an object and then after that an STL. There's a program for extracting models from the game. Yeah, so there's Sinter's IIF model. Um, Uncrustables. They're delicious. <laughs> Sorry, Smuckers. Going real quick this time. Uh, yeah, so I think also if you search the forums for 3D printer or 3D printed or 3D models, um, somebody else uh, kind of goes through the same thing. Yeah, I've never, uh, but I know I carry him slash mongrel slash uh, what the hell is his other character name? But he um, he has three D printed uh, f files from the game, Eyes of Mesra, um, Jawa Iron Rifle, things like that. And I think he actually sells them on Etsy for like four bucks or something, super cheap. Uh, what I'd like to be able to do is three D print people's characters, but they probably be in a T pose. Oh. I see, yeah. Either the T-pose or like the arm straight down because that's kind of like the default. That would actually be really cool, printing somebody's 3D, uh, their actual. Uh, the hard part, so I don't know how all the visual customizations would be, right? So the, the things that you get from image designer, the hairstyles and all that, because I don't think that would make, it's not like, Right, so every character that every other person's character that's running by, it's not like my client has a model or makes a model for that character. It just uses all those different things: this hairstyle, this visual style, this skin, this face tattoo, these horns, this Wookie pattern, uh, and then my the client knows how to you know combine them. So I don't know how that'll be. It would be awesome though. I mean, the idea of right, what was a what's the site that prints the D and D minifigs? Uh, uh, I can see the the red logo, but like where people printed a flash speeder doing that, it went really well. Nice. Yeah, print the AV twenty one next. But uh, yeah, that would be awesome to have like a customized. Here's my character, right? Image designed, the clothing choices. The this is exactly how I look, right? If uh, like this. All right, so here's exactly me, and then be able to print that. That would be that would be awesome. Yeah, the character creation. Yeah, so the same, you know, the thing an image designer would do to make your character look unique, uh, unique-ish, right? How you want it to look. Um, I don't know how you would get that model, but that would be awesome. If somebody figured that out, that would be super cool. I know, I'm sure there'd be tons of people who would be into into getting, like, their character. Here's a, a model of my character, not a Zabrak, 
my fucking Zabrak. There are many Zabraks like it, but this one is mine. AV21 is better for 3D printing, in my opinion, since it's basically a rectangle. Yeah. Yep. Hero Forge. Hero Forge. Yep. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I, I had, I built a few models and I really wanted to get a mini of like a little, um, little gnome wizard that I was playing in a campaign, but then we stopped playing and I was like, Oh, I don't want to drop 30 or 40 bucks or whatever. Hero Forge. I was checking that site out when I was researching three JS for project. Yeah. Hero Forge was, was, uh, is, is the site I was thinking. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it was just really, and then of course I'm like looking, I'm like, Oh, I can get it printed in fucking bronze or something, but then it's now $80 or $150, whatever the hell it was. And I'm like, maybe if we kept playing this campaign for years and I was like really attached, it would be awesome to have like a real quality, yeah, whatever. Uh, oh yeah, this is the last of those four. <laughs> now that we're over now, yeah. So here's the last of those four um, quest items from the guy I most take. Breng Kingle, Breng King Kringle, something like that is the guy's name. Yeah. So this one is the Wart Casserole, and it has the the recipe there: saute in blue milk until brown. Place a dish. <laughs> Add one handful humanoid hand, trypophan. Trimpian, Trimpian, Trimpian. A pinch of Tomo Spice, fill casserole with blue milk, cover and bake at medium heat until tender. tender. Serves one. Yeah. So let's see. Back here, what does he have? Some Crispic, some Timberant, heirloom drinking glass, a pelt. This, I think, is supposed to be an Ewok pelt. Yeah, an elder Ewok pelt. This is from the uh, Marauder theme park on Endor. When you get Marauder armor, actually, at one point, so I was um, when I was doing Chef, and I was trying to find ways. Christ, I keep spinning the camera. When I was trying to find ways to sell more food, uh, which was kind of short sighted, I just needed to wait a little bit longer for my Chef business on Bastlers to take off and be well known, and then I was just selling food as fast as I could make it. But one of my ideas was to sell like d d food decoration packs. So I went through and I looked at every single food. And then I looked at, so if I examine this, and I'll zoom in the chat here. EDB dish Crispic. I think Crispic might be the only thing that uses Crispic, which is a super fun, like it's bright pink blue, it's colorful. But then if I look at something like, uh, well here, actually I'll just look at the wart casserole. So it says con dish casserole full. Yeah, so there's Breng Kingle. There's the, actually the guy's name from the quest. But I think like Vegash uses the same model as this. So I went through all my chef and I recorded all of the unique models of food. Like, okay, here's all the different styles visually of food you can make. And then I said, okay, this, you know, for uh, whatever. For this one, there's these four, four things that use the same bottle as brandy or whatever. Uh, which one is the cheapest to make resource wise? Okay, this one takes the least amount of resources. So then I was going to sell kits like, hey, buy a kit and it'll come with one of every different kind of, uh, you know, decorative bottle and food. I never did though. So I remember, oh yeah, so this one says Sith Altar. This is a quest item and it uses that holocron splinters. And then he has holocron splinters. And then I think these ones. Splinters is lowercase. It's kind of hard to see. You can't see it on the exam window, but here Splinters has a lowercase, but then there's a third set over here where Splinters is uppercase. Uh, maybe this would be easier to see. So yeah, so this Splinters is uppercase and that one is lowercase. You notice how it changed there? Uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase. I remember he was, uh, I remember Chris was being excited to share that with me because I had not ever noticed the difference. But I guess they're just two different quest items and one of them has a lowercase, one has uppercase. All right, so then you've got uh, all the village crystals here. I'm guessing one of these is mined. Yep, that one's health. This one, oh, they're both health. Maybe as a mined one somewhere else. Um, Sunridal's crystal, Night Sister Force crystal, some lightsaber kind of quest object looking things. Attention to detail, yo. Yeah, that's what, you know, for a lot of these things, that's <laughs> what it is. He's got a couple of holocrons back here, a Sith and a regular holocron. So this uh, Night Sister Force Crystal, there's a quest line where you get a Night Sister Force Crystal and a Singing Mountain Clan Sister, um, or Singing Mountain Clan Force Crystal. 
And then there's the fragment of Alderaan, which you looked at up front. And then there's one other crystal, two other crystals. There's the mystical glowing orb. What the hell's the other one? Fragment of Alderaan, Nice Sister, Sing Mountain Clan. There's another quest item that uses that red crystal model. It's escaping me at the moment. All right, so these are, this is a CDF rifle that has a lot of mods on it. Right, if you look at we zoom in here, it's got three mods, and they're all pretty. This is probably looted from like, um, like a crate or something, something real high level because it's 24, 24, 23. So, this was actually something else that they fixed uh, at some point. So, they would restrict what types of mod would drop on what types of items. So, a rifle it used to be for years and years, a rifle with a rifle speed mod was like, Holy shit, it's got a rifle speed mod, that's that's awesome. And then, after that, publish. It would only drop with rifle mod. So like you can no longer get, you know, I have rifles with unarmed accuracy or two hand speed or, you know, things that don't make sense on it. Um, so it was it, originally it was uncommon to get, uh, you know, like, oh, I've got a stun bat with one hand speed. That was, and now it's, that's the only way they'll drop. So I think this was, I don't imagine light lightning cannon accuracy or thrown weapon accuracy would drop on a rifle anymore. All right. So after that. In this pile, he's got an exceptional CDF, another exceptional CDF, an exceptional DLT-20A, another exceptional DLT-20A. So he's got some spider venoms here. So it's at 301. That's pretty high. 306. I think cap is like 363 or 365 or something like that. So, you know, good venoms. They're 300, they're 300 plus, but not quite cap. It does loot a carbine. Oh, carbine. Okay. So the, the heavy – thanks, help. Yeah, so I guess those heavy weapon accuracy or heavy weapon mods like LLC and, and things, I guess they drop on a bunch of stuff still. Um, you can look in the code. They have like a, you know, the whole array of what drops on what. But that's good to know. Yeah, so maybe this one was re looted more recently because I imagine throwing it with front weapon accuracy is probably the same way. Yeah, okay. But you would not get a carbine with a rifle mod on it anymore um, or a rifle with a carbine mod or carbine. Johnny's still around. Johnny, we had a whole whole conversation went out on a stream about is it carbine, carbine? Uh, it turns out it can be either. So he's got a Rancor bile, effective range. I don't know if it's yellow text or something. None of these stats seem real high to me. Area effect 11, 200. I feel like 200 is close to the cap. Yeah. Display pedestal. So this is another item that if I was going to come and steal from him, uh, I would have I would have stolen. I do not have a legendary curved sword. He's got this sick legendary curved sword. I definitely would, uh, <laughs> definitely would love adding that to to my collection. But that's okay. Not stealing stuff from a friend. Yeah, and then next to that is a exceptional two hand curved sword. Which uh, is you know not that great, fifty six to five twenty eight, and that's pupped. So let's see, we got some acclay bones down here. Anything crazy? No, nah, ninety seven to one fourteen, kind of some mid level, mid range bones there. Some gorax shards, spider fang, crate tissue. Oh, two crate tissues. Let's see, what are these ones? Nine stack of one ninety ones. You know, pretty good, but. Three stack 229, some nice high damage ones. It's got a vibro motor here, 102 to 109. I feel like, oh yeah, so I think 120 is cap. So that's a real high end. Bunch of sword cores, solidifying agents, probably one of each cube if I had to guess. Let's see. A green, a white, a red, oh, two reds. Green, a white, and a couple of reds. Yeah, actually, I don't know the stats of these. So even if they were high, I wouldn't know. So this was a one item I snuck in here. He had two Acclay Venoms uh, up here in this thing, in this little vase. And I had gotten a one off this stack uh, already. I actually happened to be AFKing the Fire Spider when the Acclay group – I only ever went and helped in the – I never helped AFK the Acclay. But I was helping AFK the uh, people in the guild on the Fire Spider on Basilisk for maybe two weeks or a month. Not for long. But in that couple weeks I was down there, they the Acclay group looted a stack of the legendary Venoms. So I ended up with one of these, and then somebody else later didn't want theirs, so I got it. So I ended up getting two or three off the same stack. 
So one time I, I was over here at Christmas house, I snuck in and I took one of his regular Ackley Venoms out and I put this legendary one in. I don't know if he came back to the game after that or not, because occasionally he would come back and kind of visit for you know a week here or there. Uh, and I would not have told him that. I would not have sent him an email, I don't think. I would have just put it there and seen if he'd noticed. And I think I did, I did that with something else too, actually. I know one time I put an exceptional piece of Thorian clothing in this middle column here, but I told him about that. I told him I hid something. I told him I played hide and seek. So he has an exceptional clothing attachment, general ranged aiming, <laughs> nothing great. Uh, a legendary crate dragon scale. Let's see, what's the kinetic on that? 40% uh, kinetic, just a single. So I think you could probably use that. That could be functional. What do you got up here? An exceptional Night Sister layer. 10%. So it's within the range of, of normal, but the high end of the range. I think 10 or 11 might be the cap that you can get without rolling anything special. All right. And then I think I missed something down here. Armor to oh no I didn't I looked at that okay yeah the rest of this one's empty and then on this throw pillar we have another rancor tooth two thirty three max is that the same as what this one was no it's two thirty one so two overcap rancor tooth there and another table and cantina seat all right so now let's go through the middle of the room and then uh, and then we'll speed up a little bit after this uh, this building I think so he has these here and I didn't know he had well here let's look at this one first. All right, so this is just uh, that's just an exceptional night sister lance. So I didn't remember having him having this one, uh, and when I bought my first, well, actually my only still. So this is a night sister lance that. So every weapon has a chance of rolling with a random dot, right? A dynamic, a random dot, uh, and you can also get a double dot. So I've I have other. I looted a, the first one I saw was off an Ewok when I was AFKing Ewoks. I looted a stone knife with like a health fire and a constitution disease or something like that. I was like, oh shit, two dots on one. But you can do the same thing on items that have a static dot. So here's a Night Sister Lance with the static health dot. And then it rolled a mind poison and an action poison dot on top of that. So it's a triple dot. So I have one of these as well. And I was so excited when I got it because I don't, I hadn't, when I got mine, I never remembered seeing one before. I was like, oh shit, it's a triple dot. And then I was here one time and I looked at his and I was like, oh, he's probably had this for years and I just didn't know. And then since then, I've, I've seen a few other ones from people as well. Take a little uh, sippy sip here. <clears throat> Trying not to – on that nine-hour stream, I I guess I ran out of water for a while and I didn't go get more and my throat was dry. And actually for the next couple of days after that, I was a little hoarse. So trying not to be his horse. So he's got an exceptional brown crystal, I guess, or no, yellow yellow crystal, exceptional power crystal, exceptional ranker bile, crate tissue. Let's see, what is this? A four stack of 90. Uh, imagine being, I mean, <laughs> I don't mind because I end up with stuff like this. This was how I got a lot of my exceptionals. But imagine f killing crate, seeing that in your inventory, exceptional tissue, just imagine how excited you would get and then open it and seeing a four stack of 90 damage tissues. Oh, that is painful. That would be rough. Another exceptional bile. All right, what does he have on this table? Uh, exceptional broken decryptor, exceptional recording rod, another ranker tooth. Also, <laughs> another another overcap, 212 damage. I guess the, well, the mins aren't bad on any of those. All right, so let's see, what do we have in here? Stranded Web Rebels Weapon, that's from a quest. A uh, standard issue Blast Tech DH-17 blaster pistol owned by Rebel Alliance officer stranded on Yavin 4. Devorian Fur Glosser, that quest is at a coronet. He's got a crate of free resources and an AV-21 deed. A Bromir Sacred Skull, Bantha Statue. He's got the food cart back here. On the food cart he has piece of art. Is this the one from Bestine? No. Okay. So this is just a, a piece of art, but there's one you can get from Bestine. It looks the same. Once again, uses the same appearance, but it's a quest item. A couple of these rebel banners. I guess these are the small ones. The large one, I think is the one that gives you the, the error message when you click on it. Let's see what do we got over here. Another ranker tooth. Let's get, let's see another 252. Yep. Min 77. So Another overcap max damage there. 
data storage device. <clears throat> so this is part of the uh, loop kit that makes the, or this is data storage unit, <clears throat> which is part of the loop kit that makes the data storage device. And get those 12 little stories kind of. Campaign disk. I think this is going to be a no trade bestine. Yep. So this is a no trade item from the bestine election quest stuff. Third Sun Cantina Deed, Heavy Duty Leather, oh, it's like an eight stack, seven stack, which I think they can drop seven now normally. Uh, that was published nine or 10. Uh, AV21 schematic, Bantha Doll. Yeah, one time when I, I told him I hid something, I put a, an exceptional, like up top here, inside here, I put an exceptional uh, Thorian sweater or long vest or something, because he was an Thorian and I had a, gotten a, a duplicate. So I, I told him I left a present in his guild hall, but he had to find it. I don't I don't think it took him too long. I think it was a good idea though to move it up high. So it was in here. So, you know, it, your camera doesn't really want to see up high. So I think you had to not only go inside the column, but then look up. At least from my height, maybe maybe he walked in on a Thorian much taller than me and was like, "Oh, that was fucking easy. It's right here." All right. I thought he had a bunch of data disks in here somewhere. Did I miss these? Are they in like a bookcase? Maybe I missed them. I know. So he he um had an, he got an enjoyment from the data disks. Their quests quest items they all look the same, but they have all these different bits of text and names. I wonder if he picked them up to make room for other stuff. I could have sworn he had a bunch of data disks piled up somewhere. And I think they're like maybe it's on one of these tables, and I missed it. I remember there being four or five just in a nice, tidy little stack right on top of each other. It made them really hard to click. I thought it was on like one of these. I suppose it's not that important. They're just quest, you know, little data disk quest items. All right, I can't find them. He might, maybe he moved them or picked them up. Let's see, what's the. Yeah, there's exactly 400 items in the building, so. Maybe he picked them up to make room for some some more entertaining loot. It's going to annoy me, though. Yeah, I guess he still has some sprinkled around, so. All right, so that took, what, an hour and a half? An hour, an hour 20? 